Hey everybody, Wolfie here. Um, figured today we're going to talk about, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a serious video. Um, as many know that have watched my videos for any length of time, um, I'm a fur trapper. So the topic of today's video is going to be conibear bear traps. Or body grip traps um, we'll go through a quick history here they're all body grip traps um, it's been a long time uh, um, reference to them when they're called a cona bear trap because the Victor trap company that's what theirs were originally called and well I do believe still are they're the Victor Conibear. Um, they're one of the oldest trap companies still going. So, but there's a lot of different sizes. These are very. Um, they can be a dangerous trap compared to many, because the other uh, common reference to them is they're a quick kill trap. Um, these are designed that. Once the animal triggers them, it's dead within seconds, um, if not instantly. Now, like I said, there's a lot of different sizes to them. We're going to just go over the sizes and the use of them. Um, we're going to start from the bottom. This little guy is a 110 body grip. And this would be used for muskrat. There's another version of it called a 120. Or known as a 120. And it's the exact same except it's got two springs on it. So there would be a second spring coming out this side. I do have one. I think it's still packed in a milk crate in the shed. But as you can see, these are pretty easy to set by hand. Now, that is a live trap. Not so much dangerous, it can hurt you. Um, that thing closes down on your hand, especially if you were unlucky enough to have the what's called the dog here, which is the lock for the trigger, part of the trigger, half the trigger mechanism. If that was to hit your hand when it closed, that would really hurt. Not so much a worry as you can tell by the size. Um, this is a four and a half inch trap. Um, like the opening from jaw to jaw is four and a half inches. So there's not much worries as far as stepping in it. Um, a dog or something could step in it and trigger it, hurt their foot. Now, that's, like I said, this is the little guy. I do believe this is the smallest body grip trap that exists out there. It's a pretty nice little thing. You want lots of them if you're muskrat trapping. Lots of them. <laughs> Throw that on the wood pile here. Now, there's another size called a 150. 150 or 155. I don't remember which number it is. I don't have any or use them. So it kind of slips my mind on it. But it is a single spring version of this trap. Now this is a 160. Um, this is great for raccoons, fishers, martens, um, other such critters around that size. Um, it's a fairly powerful trap um, they can be set with a little bit of work here <laughs> by hand now an important thing to remember is never store these with the springs compressed it will weaken the springs and 
Okay, so you've got your two springs at the sides. These have hooks on them. Once you get to this size, the springs all have hooks because you're working with two springs. This would be a set 160 body grip trap. Nice swivel part way in the chain. That was done by the gentleman that I purchased these from. And as you can see, you can also unset these by hand due to the size. They are pretty powerful springs. These have practically brand new springs on them. Get this unset so it's handleable. But yes, this would be a smaller sized trap for raccoons. It's perfect for Fisher, Martin. Um, I've even had them set for mink. Didn't catch any in it. Um, I think it's a little too big. I'd prefer to use the 120 size, which is the smaller size with the double spring. Set that over with the other one. Uh. Now, from there we go up to this size, 220. It's a good raccoon and fisher trap. Um, it works great in boxes. Um, there's some really nice designs for boxes. Some people just use a five, one of the square five gallon pails, four gallon, whatever they are. Um, really nice trap. It can be set by hand. Not the easiest. Not super hard, but it's not the easiest. Not by any means. Um, great trap. Very solid. Once again, I want to emphasize the fact that these are quick kill traps. Um, if, so, if your dog or cat or whatever was to stick their head in this, it would kill them probably instantly. A bigger dog, it's just going to have one heck of a headache. From there we go to the bigger traps. Now, these things you do not set by hand. Out of safety. This one is a two, ah, sorry, 280 conibear. This is an 8 inch gap in here. Um, as you can see, it's got the safety hooks on the springs for when you are setting. Now, we have that one, and then the big size, which is a 380, or 330 conibear, or 330 body grip, 330 quick kill. This is an extremely powerful trap. And you do not set these by hand unless you absolutely have to. I have, and it takes an awful lot out of you just to set one single trap. So, now these two sizes have a few uses. I've seen them set for, um, like online, I've seen people set, use them for things like bobcats. Now, I don't have to um, contend with that factor here. And important thing to remember is, I'll show you the setting of one of these in a few minutes, but important thing to remember is keep in mind your local laws in regards to these traps. They vary no matter where you are, all across, I don't know, about Europe or any of them areas. I know a little bit about the United States for trapping because I know several trappers from there. Like 
across the entire country. Um, and it also varies right across Canada, depending on the province you're in. And some places you can only set these traps in water. Some places you, it is completely illegal for any kind of bear traps on land. Um, you, I don't honestly don't understand the purpose in that except for, um, public safety for like people's dogs and stuff like that and i'm sorry but if you're trapping someplace where um people walk their dogs and stuff like where public public access is easily um accessible to people for walking like hiking um walking their dogs so on and so forth then I'm sorry, but it's stupid to use these types of traps in that type of area. If you do that, well, fine, you do that. That's your choice. But my personal opinion is that it's stupid to do so. Now, there is exceptions like the little muskrat traps, things like that. Um, and that's one of the other rules I've seen, like laws I've seen in regards to them, is... Some areas you can only use up to a certain size, um, or you can only use a certain size on land. Like the old, I've seen uh, people mention where there is only one size of trap that you're allowed to use, like on land, for these uh, body grip traps. And they've probably put a lot of thought into making that rule. But anyway, that's all political crap, and I hate political crap, so. But, yes, make sure you know your laws on what you can and can't do with these things if you're going to use them. Um, now, these things, these are for otter and beaver. I love my options between the two sizes of trap. And for an example, we're going to show the setting of a 280 Conner Bear, a 280 body grip trap. I'm going to move my hot chocolate here because, well, <laughs> sitting over there, probably be cold by the time I'm done. It's getting there now. These are my trap setters for body grip traps. My dad made me these a long time ago. These things are a godsend. If you're going to trap with bigger body grip traps, get a pair of setters. Now, uh, they, what they are, it's flat bar, heavy flat bar. There's a small hook. I'll get it so the light shows on each end. You hook them in the rings of the body grip trap, or of the spring, squeeze them together. There's a lot of force here. <laughs> Put your safety hook on and slowly release the pressure. Now have one spring set. Repeat for the other side. Same idea, hook, put your hook on, slowly release the pressure until it grabs. Now there's been times where I've even cheated and used these setters to set the jaws on these things. Just because it made it quick and easy. Now, important thing to have with these traps as well. safety. This is a spring-loaded double hook clamp type thing. You'll see how that works in a moment. Now you get your spring trigger set the way you want it. So there's a lot of variations on how to set your trigger. You just pull it up like this. Get your springs out to the sides with the hooks on top. 
like facing up on these. Push them together. Keep your hand away from the trigger. Latch it. Now, before you let go of these jaws, this is where your safety comes in. You hook it on the jaws. Now, the purpose for this, now, if this fires while I'm setting the trap, it can only open so far. And even without the hooks on the springs, it can only open as far as this will allow it to open. This is the most important thing you can have when you're out in the winter. Um, you've got the simple safety factor of these are made of steel. They get wet. It's cold in the winter. Your gloves get wet. They can now stick to this trap and cause a very serious safety issue. Now we'll move this 330 out of the way. So what we have here, once your trap's in place, you unhook your spring first. That's the first thing you do. Move your springs out towards the end when you can. And get them into place to stabilize your trap. Okay, so from this point you would have uh, wooden stakes or whatever that come down through the centers of the springs or through the eyes of the springs. This is now your beaver trap or otter trap. I love these 280s for otters. They seem to be the perfect size. Um, now, what's going to happen is the animal is going to come through. Um, we'll say this is set into a channel. And the way you would have it is you would want your safety up on the open side of the jaws, away from the trigger. And you would lower this down into the channel, stake it in place. And what's going to happen, okay, I'm going to move this safety to the other side. Now, what's going to happen, this is down in the channel. Set out of the way. Now, your otter comes along, he swims through, hits this trigger, and with any luck, he's toast. So, I'm not going to use my for this, even though the safety's on there. Um, I'm going to grab a chunk of wood here. Perfect size chunk of wood. This is my otter. <laughs> okay, so your otter comes through. Now, obviously, once this is set, you take your safety off carefully. Now, this is going to bounce when this fires. But your otter comes through, he hits this trigger. As you can see, he did not make it very far into this trap. That is designed to close at the base of the neck. These are all designed this way. Um, the idea is instant death or very close to it. And if you're lucky, that's how it works. It doesn't always work that way. But if there's no 
BSing on that, but it doesn't always work that way. Now, unsetting one of these works the same way. Using the setters. You just gotta watch that backlash <laughs> when the handles move. We'll get our otter here. As you can see, they close pretty hard. You can see the notch in it where the jaws slam shut. So yeah, that's pretty much it for these things. And by the way, don't use logs when you can help it to fire your traps. Because now I've got to take this in and straighten this jaw. <laughs> but I wanted to, I've got the tools to do that, so I'm not overly worried about it. But that's about it for these traps. One thing I did want to mention though is with the different sizes, you've, through the video you've heard me refer to them as 110s, 220s. 280s, 330s. The theory behind that is when the trap closes, the number that's given to it, like the 330, that closes at 330 pounds of pressure, like PSI. Now, so for some of these, I find that hard to believe. Um, a 110. I really can't see that closing at 110 pounds of pressure, but maybe it does. I really don't know. I've never looked into the science of it. But anyway, that's the theory on the number to these traps. Now, a lot of companies, they don't use the numbers like the same three-digit number, the 330, 280, 220 and so on and so forth. Um, but this, it's still the same theory, the same idea for setting them, and they can be just as dangerous no matter what type it is. So. Okay, so I'm gonna quit boring all you non-trappers, and as for all the trappers out there, I hope, um, especially the newer trappers that are just learning this stuff, um, I hope that this video is of some help to you. Um, gives you a little bit of information about the traps, what to use them for, um, how to use them, and how to like set them. So I'm going to quit boring everyone now, and I hope you all have a great day, and we'll talk to you all again soon.